let me start by saying, I, I think I've told you before, yes. but I love the movie. Awesome. I just want to say congratulations on such a job well done. Thank you. Uh, I, I, th there's so many things I could talk about, but let's just jump right on in the fact that I normally am not the biggest fan of 3D. The 3D in this is exceptional. Yeah. It absolutely you. needs to be seen in 3D. Yeah. Talk about that. The reason that we shot it native 3D, you know, Jim and I are huge proponents of 3D. I shot the first digital 3D movie, actually, Spike is 3, using Jim's cameras that he was developing for underwater. So we're at the forefront of that. And a lot of the 3D you see today are conversions, sort of afterthoughts at the end of post-production slapped on. We shot this native 3D with the latest cameras that he had. They're like Ferraris compared to the mop bucket I used on Spike is 3D. And um, it just gives you such clarity and gives you a, a real window into this world. And not just for the action, but for the sake of the character. You want to see it through her eyes. And so the more you feel like it's really happening, the more grounded it is, the more you buy into the fantasy, believe in the character. And, and look, I think we have to learn, it's an artistic tool. How do you use it? It's like, a, it's like using focus, it's like using lighting. And Robert has the experience to, to bring to it the subtlety of 3D. It's not about 3D, it's about having the screenplay disappear and enveloping the audience more in your narrative storytelling. Yeah, I see it as a way of being invited into this world. It's the same team that did, like, Avatar was doing our 3D. So that's yeah. why it's the best 3D you've seen since Avatar. It, right. it's, it's truly unbelievable. Um, obviously, the world of Alita is just so cool. And it's um, this mix of this great practical sets mixed with these amazing visual effects shots. Uh, talk a little bit about the world and maybe, like, some of your favorite parts of the world. Um, first of all, as an actor, I, I, it was such a dream and a pleasure to, to have so many luscious environments, practical environments built for us to play in. Um, we did maybe two days, three days on a, on a green screen volume. Um, but everything else was shot on, on the back lot of Troublemaker. It's 97,000 square feet of actual working Iron City. So when I walk out, when Alito walks out into Iron City for the first time, I'm actually walking out into Iron City and seeing it with all of its vibrancy and, and alive with people and gyrocycles and cars. And it, it does something, you know, it, it gives you so much for your performance and to have all of the tools necessary to do your job, I mean, it's just, it's a charmed experience. Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I wanted to build sets and have real locations and real bars, real props, real actors around her because Jim told me early on that for him, fantasy and sci-fi needs to be really grounded and real in order for you to buy the fantasy. So I thought, I, don't, I shouldn't do what I normally do and green screen and have any sort of, you know, like a Sin City effect bringing manga to life. Don't want any layers of artifice already on top of it. Really want to go more real so that it's more grounded. And I think that's why you believe it more. So, you know, we have the ambush alley fight and that's a practical set. But then we have the underworld fight and that's a complete CG set. People don't know the difference. They watch the movie and they can't tell. But where visual effects really came into letting us build this world out is when we go to places like the Motorball Stadium. We could not practically build a stadium that sat 400,000 people. That could or, move that fast. Or have racers, around, yeah. you know, racing at 100 miles an hour. So we turned to visual effects, but we continued to come back to ground it in character and ground it in performances in, in the center of these action sequences. Anyone who's ever read the manga and has seen what Yuki Takeshiro did when he made motorball tracks, it was almost like he was sitting in his studio like, and we'll have this ramp going into space, and then this one will be in a knot, and then this one will be, he, he must have just been like, you know, I'm just gonna reach into the nether regions of my creativity here and just make something so crazy. Um, so for him to see that <laughs> come to life, uh, it was mind-blowing <laughs> for him. He's like, I made it so that no one could build that track, and you guys built this track. I recently screened for him in Tokyo. I, yeah, I can't imagine. Which, <laughs> which was so nerve-wracking going in and so rewarding coming out. Uh, because through an interpreter, he said to me, one, that we lived up to the promise Jim had made him 20 years ago that we would hold true to his world and not distort it. Two, that the movie had more emotion than he ever expected, and that's thanks to Rosa and her performance. But he then said also that the action and the motorball came together on, on a scale that when he was drawing, he never thought possible. Uh, I definitely want to talk about the editing process because that's ultimately the final rewrite. I'm curious what you learned in the editing room that you weren't expecting, maybe uh, what you changed as a result of early screenings. 
You know, what we learned in the editing is something that uh, reinforced what we've learned on other movies, that it comes down to performance. That, you know, finding the best performance. Don't get caught up in the visuals, but what is Rosa and the other actors doing in the given moment? And also give it time to breathe. Sometimes in, in a movie that's an action movie, there's a tendency to cut everything faster. You cut the action faster, and then you do it with the dramatic scenes. And then you're like, why do I care? That's right. We have dramatic scenes that breathe. When, when she says, I'm going to give you my heart, and plays that out, you get to that point of the scene, and she says at the end of it, boy, that was intense, huh? And it was for all of us because we let it play out. If it was a faster pace, we couldn't really do it. Um, By the way, that, that leads to a great laugh in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that <laughs> was actually nothing. Robert letting that take breathe. That's not in the script. Yeah. Right. That's Robert going, let's see what she And as soon as she did, did, I went, that's going to be so funny. That'll mm -hmm. really, and you, she just did this. And it was hard to get the CG to capture what she did because it was just such a, you know, this, <laughs> we've all done, but to get a CG character to do it believably and get a laugh, that was the challenge. Yeah. Like, we got to nail that because that's like the charm of her. Uh, but if I can do the uh, repeat one thing, uh, you obviously did early screenings for friends and family. Uh -huh. What did you learn from those screenings that maybe did you make any changes as a result of those? Trying to be the, one, the one, the one oh. thing that if people read the script, they'll see that we've changed. We had a scene where um, Hugo woke up in the cyborg body that you see him with at the uh, end, end yeah. of the movie. Oh, that's how it is in the graphic novel. Right, and it was in there. And in watching the movie, it was just a beat too far. It was, it was a, I'll call it a cul-de-sac. We went into the scene, we went through it, and we came back right in the same spot. And we lifted that scene out, and it really changed the whole pacing of the ending. Yeah. Another thing that we did that was not in the original script, and this is an ad, this is not an edit, the scene where she cuts the teardrop yeah. in the locker room, sure. which was not in there originally. We were looking to find that beat, to give it that breath between what we call the tube scene and her going out into the track that could be the emotional resolution of her dealing with her loss. And we tried different ways to manifest it and then came up with that idea of doing it that way. Again, I want to say, uh, movie's awesome. Thanks. I uh, wish you guys nothing but the best. Thanks. And I'll see, and you, I'll see tonight. you tonight. <laughs> 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 Terrific.